All right, the light is everything right now. It's a perfect time to talk about extension, hip extension. You survived yesterday's wad, which is about kind of trying to accumulate 10 minutes in the bottom of a squat. It does a lot of things for the hips. It opens up the back. Your spine didn't come out your throat. You didn't trash your meniscus. It's actually okay to let yourself reverse in the bottom. We don't have big weights overhead. It's not a very active position. It's a very passive position. It's impossible to stop yourself from reversing. Good job on that. But uh, the, uh, the reverse of that is what we're going to talk about tonight is about extension. Uh, we train hip extension like our life's dependent on it. The problem is, even though we're trying to be really hip extension dominant athletes, which is hip extension coming, the hip coming back past midline, the problem is that we see athletes who are short in the front of the hip through the front anterior structures, front structures of the hip, and that tends to put them into a tightened position in the front, which means that they can't extend very effectively because they're overturned or get short in the front. Have a difficulty coming to a full time, full open hip in the clean, for example, oftentimes front short hip is the culprit. So here's the deal. You know, that's all well and good. That's exercise. And if you're an Olympic lifter, that's fine. But there are other things that are more fun. For example, working on better hip extension to set up more effective kicking on your skate. So you can skate the, uh, the hills of the Bay Area. So here I am, big drive, bigger extension, more rides. There we go, big drive, get a lot of speed going. There's that kick. So what are we really talking about? Petting the dog, that's what we're talking about. No, seriously. Let me show you what's up. So here we are, back in the Kickstart garage. The den of pain, as uh, my friends know. Take a look. There's a wall, very simple setup. I'm going to park my knee up against the wall. Do you see that? All the way to the corner, foot vertical, not flying out to the side, keeping the femur in line with my body. Over here, same thing. Femur in line with my body, push to the side, other hip comes up into a high kneeling position. I'm gonna squeeze my butt and try to get my right hip past 180 degrees, past neutral, zero, into actual extension. The leg up protects my low back so I don't overextend. Driving through, belly's tight, or nice and organized, squeeze your butt in the back. You'll find that it's actually tough to squeeze your butt in the back. So here's position number one. Bam! Hang out here. Two minutes minimum. Contract, relax. Do what you want. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Then we open up the hip. Ah! Tear that thing open. Belly is tight. Get tight as you can. Try to squeeze that thing, open up tight, nice and neutral, don't make a pain face. So with all of these things, you don't ever want to go in the pain cave. You know why? Because your totem animal is not in the pain cave and your totem animal will not help you. Stay out of the pain cave. You'll find that there's probably a different side to side. Wind that foot up all the way to the corner, drop that hip down, try to press your hip into the ground, press it down. Pressing that hip, again you can see the setup here, no big deal, easy, squeezing the butt, hanging out, two positions. That's a total of how many minutes? Four minutes each hip. If you want to, you can even go in to your house, way more comfortable. We called this the couch stretch originally. Oh hey, there's the girls, watching a little fantastic Mr. Fox. Grab a little paleo snack treat. There may or may not be rum in there. Put your foot all the way up into the corner of the couch. Have your uh, paleo treat. And try to accumulate some time opening up your hips. Good luck. See you tomorrow.